All right, guys, we've got our map pick. Took a little longer than expected, but we've got a treat for you. I love the player that they're sending out. This is going to be awesome. I think if anyone on Nocturnal Gamers roster could take Firezerk out, it will be this guy. But that's all I'm going to tell you about him. All hmm. I'm going to tell you about him until we get into the game. Sluggy, it's going to be another ZVZ, man. We're looking at Acolyte Ladder Edition. Thoughts? Feelings? All right, then. <clears throat> Four ZBZs in a row. Uh, let's see that what happens in this game. Uh, I'm wondering if he could finally be that guy to take down Firezer. He could be, man. He could be. Could be. Um, could be. How does Acolyte affect this matchup? Ooh, Acolyte. That is a very exciting map to talk about because it's so different. Obviously, the safe natural with the very narrow ramp, ramp going up there is a mm -hmm. huge factor. So a lot of the players, what they would mm -hmm. do is take a very greedy approach. They would, because if you just have two queens blocking the entrance, then right. you can, you're pretty much safe from almost all mm -hmm. kind of attacks early on with the lanes. Right. So I'm going to expect a gasless opening from mm -hmm. both sides. That is the expected meta for Acolyte. But let's okay. see what happens. Okay, fair enough, man. Uh, we're just trying to get the last player into this game, and... Wait a second. Wait a second. I thought... Okay, maybe yeah, they're they... not sending... Do they yeah, not they haven't send... changed. Yeah, they've, they've changed, changed just the talks. Yeah. Okay, okay, so it's not uh, the player I thought it was. Mm, still could be a very good match, though. Uh, what? Uh, remind me, what race is Sotorx? He is Terran, he so we have a different matchup. Yes! We have a Zerg versus Terran, guys! We have a Zerg versus Terran! So, you just told us how this affects ZVZ, man. How does this affect ZVT now? It's pretty much similar to how it goes. Uh -huh. it, because it's so safe, uh, unlike the ZVZ, mm -hmm. I'm guessing that the Zerg player will take the base down at the natural uh, that is out, that is towards the outside. Mm -hmm. Not the same one, because that way you can get creep spread faster. And because it is, it takes so long for the Terran player to get to the mm -hmm. Zerg side, right. it can be said that it might be a little bit Zerg favored, but we'll have to see how the opening builds affect the future of the games. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we're, we're hopping into the game. It's loading, but I'm reading through chat and it looks like people are having some issues donating. Um, disrespect, can you talk to Phoenix Tears in chat, like private message him and let him know what the situation is. He'll get me that information and I'll see what I can do to fix that, guys. Sorry about that. Um, sometimes, you know, technology, vehicle of esports, blah, 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 blah. We had a completely reschedule yesterday because of the uh, Battle.net maintenance. Right. So technology, definitely uh, <clears throat> not the... Not the uh, the epitome of things like we would like, but we're, we're going to get that handled for you. Meanwhile, we're getting into a Zerg versus Terran. I'm actually super hyped. I thought we were going to see four ZVZs and maybe that was going <laughs> to be it. But Firezerg shown, yeah, Fire shown himself to be a ZVZ expert. We'll see how a ZVT is. And honestly, I don't see any reason not to just go ahead and hop into this game. So, all right. Here on the top right hand side of Acolyte Ladder Edition, playing for Team Psionic Aftermath. He is up 3 0 and could possibly all kill his opponent's team. It's Firezerg! Spawning in the bottom left, a new challenger has appeared, and it is none other than Nocturnal Gaming Satorx. Yes, indeed. So, a very standard opener out of right. um, Firezerg. Uh, we're going to have to wait and see if Sotorx is going to go for like Bio or Mech. Being that it's Acolyte, what's your hunch? I'm still not quite sure. Uh, the macro game, macro mm -hmm. oriented approach of this map definitely speaks that Mech could be good and Bio bad due to his right. longer range uh, walking distance, mm -hmm. but it is still, we would not know uh, until we get into the game like for another one minute. Yeah, I'd say. About, about a minute. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, huh. So, but I would predict that maybe it could be Hellions. Mm -hmm. Hellions, oh, yeah. Oh, actually, oh. Mm -hmm. something else. What is it? This is a 2 Rex. Uh, I mean, 
16 marines and two medevac that build the one that attacks at five minutes ah okay all right so we're gonna have some drop play now the, the reason why that is mm -hmm. uh, i could call it i could recognize it as a two medevac drop at the five fifth minute mark is because the second barracks was up that allows the second barracks to get the tech lab mm -hmm. uh and there it is it's the tech lab right there and allows to get a faster sim with two medevacs uh, on the get-go okay. with 16 marines. It provides a very strong attack. But it's not so popular right now because the Zerg players were able to defend it quite well. So we'll have to see how that goes. Okay. We do have Pneumatized Carapace starting now for Fire Zerg. Is... He's going to know that this is coming, but he's going to have less gas to defend it. Is this an right. e even trade-off here, or...? I think uh, as a Zerg player and a Terran player myself, uh, I think these this uh, pneumatized carapace is definitely worth the investment. Once he is able to see that there's two uh, Raxes, mm -hmm. he can immediately just go into drone mode and just do what he's been practicing since the start of the Legacy of the Void because this build has been around for so long. And he can gain quite the confidence of knowing what to expect and what to do. Well, Fire Zerg has taken a little bit of an orthodox third. The Reaper trying to scout the um, tucked in third there does see that there is no third base. May actually start to be playing defensive, seeing he's, his opponent's still on two bases. Is this something like, kind of like mind game, or is there a like effective reason for taking this different base? Uh, I think it's the right decision in this year, because you don't really want your base to be closer to the Terran. Mm -hmm. uh, it can affect the drops a lot more. Now, mm -hmm. uh, this primary issue for Fire Zerg is that he has to be able to recognize that it's this build. Okay. And if he's really that good, then I think uh, he has been um, he has recognized this build, no problem. Because at this stage of the game, mm -hmm. with this many Marines, I mean, you gotta you gotta be skeptical. This is nothing else other than the two medevac drop. There's right. uh, no possible reason for these Marines to be for this many re uh, Marines to be here at this stage. Well, Lair is completing a Roach Warren about halfway done. Three more gas are in production. So it looked like Firezerg is building up to some kind of mid-game transition. We'll see exactly what that is. But at the moment, we've got those 16 Marines you were talking about moving right on out. And from the from the looks of it, it looks like he's going straight to this tucked in base. But there's nothing the there. The uh, placements are mm -hmm. absolutely amazing. They're spread out and they'll be able to detect the medevacs. Oh, but the Lynx should not move out at this stage. Because Zerg player only has 38 drones at this stage, so uh -huh. he really has to be able to defend as well, so that he can just continue to drone up. Yeah, drone so let's up see what after these Marines can accomplish. Well, Marines do stem on in, taking out the Queen very quickly. Well, there's already a huge loss. Yeah, and the drones being forced to pull off. Link's trying to get the perfect position. Queen's getting in there to target down the medevacs, but he is not actually manually targeting those. Good transfuses. The but Targeted right now. Otherwise, uh, these Marines could have a difficulty going home, and that's exactly what happened. Yeah, only four Marines left alive. Roaches are on the way. Glial reconstitution as well. We've got plus one armor on route. Fires are definitely mixing it up a little bit, and I don't think Sotorx is going to see this coming. Oh wow, that Overlord actually escaped, and that's uh, one of the reasons why Overlord speed has been praised by professionals. Ah. But unfortunately, this Overlord is going to die. Yeah, could have been positioned a little better. Right. Even if you spend those resources on mm -hmm. pneumatized carapace, you can still save those overlords, right? And still be able to detect that it was a two medevac drop. So yeah. that's, uh, that's a good thing. Definitely, man. Well, we still have some marines tucked in the Zerg base, but looks like there's going to be a little bit of a, a, a drop coming in from a different angle as well. Now the Right. I'm not sure what these marines are doing. The... The medevac just left them there, stranded. Well, he's actually <laughs> microing inside of the Zerg base right now. He's trying to get these, uh, yep, does pick up. He's oh, trying to get the creep um, spread within the Zerg base. And Oh, actually, I, there's a Roach Ravager attack going on right now. With Zerg Marines, it could be a little bit difficult, mm -hmm. but fortunately, there's a tank right there. Mm -hmm. Fires are hitting from every angle imaginable, definitely catching his opponent off guard when possible. Does try to throw down some Ooh, these Royal bodies. Ravagers absolutely have to make it out. The Actually, right now, Terrans have more SCVs uh, than Zerg, and if these units just get taken out, uh, it might just be a little bit difficult, and these Roaches are bleeding out, and that's not so good. 
Yeah, Marines, uh, definitely a lot of Marines still alive, um, but there's about one and a half times more supply on the field for Fire uh, Zerg, who is just gonna ignore these medevacs and send so the Roach should just it. attack right now, because with these mm -hmm. units, he can just probably defend it with the units that are coming out. Uh, and let's Links. see what happens. Yeah, Ling swinging in here, the tanks go ahead setting up. He was trying to attack, but moving uh, this close to his opponent, who is already in position. Yeah, Fire Zerg going to be forced to come out. right there. Yeah, dude. So, where did this game go wrong for Fire Zerg? The re proper reaction to the two mm -hmm. medevac build is pretty much textbook at this point. Mm -hmm. What you do is that you keep on droning on, and you build a Baneling Nest, uh, optional, at mm -hmm. the 4-minute mark, and you start making units at 440 seconds. That allows the proper timing for the Zerg to be greedy and be very defensive at the same time. Now, okay. what happened after a two medevac is that with the 16 marines, if they're dead, which is what happened, then mm -hmm. that allows the Zerg to have so much freedom. Because with two barracks, mm -hmm. Terra can attack for uh, like a two, at least two or three minutes. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, because uh, the Fire Zerg was not able to uh, drone up properly, right. and he chose to attack instead, that actually mm -hmm. played out badly because the siege tank defense was quite amazing on the Satoric side. Yeah, that that was pretty phenomenal, man. Right. Well, at this point in the game, Sotorx has eliminated Firezord, who went up 3-0. We're now 3-1. Um, Psionic Aftermath's lead, but Sotorx got the momentum. However, right. at this point, Psionic Aftermath can send out their best anti-Terran player and, you know, just go through a list of it and basically have three opportunities to try this so we'll see what they can throw out but in the meantime i am going to be looking at the matcherino page see what's going on please let me know in the chat below if you guys are still having issues but uh, until then um here's a word from our sponsors